Welcome back. Today we will discuss about ellipse. Quarter 1, module 3. Again, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. What is an ellipse? The ellipse is a set of all points on a curve in which the sum of the two distances to the focal points is a constant. Let f sub 1 and f sub 2 be two distinct points. The points f sub 1 and f sub 2 are called the foci of the ellipse. From each point on the curve, the sum of the distances to the foci is a constant. So let us now consider this point. We have point 1, the distance from f sub 1 to point 1 is d sub 1. And the distance from point 1 to f sub 2 is d sub 2. Now, according to the definition that if we're going to add the distances of the foci to a point on a curve, d sub 1 plus d sub 2, that is equal to a certain value of c which is a constant. Let us consider another point here. So this point, from point 2 to f sub 1, that is d sub 1. From point 2 to f sub 2, that is d sub 2. Now if we're going to add this, the result is still the constant, which is c. Let us consider another point. So the distance from point 3 to f sub 1 is d sub 1. And the distance from point 3 to f sub 2 is d sub 2. Now, again, if we're going to add this, it means that d sub 1 plus d sub 2 is still equal to c. In sketching the graph of an ellipse, you must know its parts. So, we have the center of the ellipse. Since there are two focus, or this is what we call the foci of an ellipse, we have also the major axis. It is a longest diameter, a line segment that runs to the center and both foci. The minor axis, it is a shortest diameter, a line segment that runs through the center and perpendicular to the major axis. Co-vertices. Co-vertices are the endpoints of the segment through the center perpendicular to the major axis, which is the minor axis. Vertices. The vertices are the opposite points on the ellipse collinear with the center and foci. Equation of the ellipse. The standard form of an ellipse is the square of x minus h over a squared plus the square of y minus k over b squared is equal to 1. So always remember this that the denominator of our x term is a and the denominator of our y term is b. So we will use this form. The center is at h comma k. The length of horizontal axis is 2a, and the length of vertical axis is 2b. To make it easier for us to sketch the graph of the ellipse, first, we need to write the standard form of an ellipse. Second, find the center with the coordinates of h and k. Third, find the endpoints of the horizontal axis. So we will use this uh, form. So one of the endpoints, we have h minus a, comma k, and the other endpoint, we have h plus a, comma k. Fourth, find the endpoints of the vertical axis. The vertical axis, we have h, comma, k minus b, and h, comma, k plus b. Since we already have 
the endpoints of both horizontal and vertical axes, then we're going to plot this on the Cartesian plane. Then we will connect the endpoints. Step 6, locate the foci using the following formula. If A is greater than B, then we will use C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. Then the major axis is the horizontal axis. Then the foci, we have H minus C comma K and H plus C comma K. Then the minor axis is the vertical axis. If B is greater than A, we will use the formula C squared is equal to B squared minus A squared. The major axis is the vertical axis. So we will use the formula of a foci, which is which are h comma k minus c and h comma k plus c. The minor axis is the horizontal axis. Note, if a is greater than b, the endpoints of major axis or the horizontal axis are the vertices of the ellipse. The endpoints of minor axis or the vertical axis are the co-vertices of the ellipse. If B is greater than A, the endpoints of major axis or the vertical axis are the vertices of the ellipse. The endpoints of minor axis or the horizontal axis are the co-vertices of the ellipse. Let's do this. Find the center, foci, vertices, and co-vertices of the curve. Sketch the graph of the given ellipse. Step 1. We need to write this in standard form. So you have observed that the given ellipse is already in standard form. So we will copy this. Before we proceed to the next step, we need to identify the value of A and the value of B. So if you can still recall that the denominator of the x term is a squared, and you have observed that the denominator is 9, and it is a perfect square. We can also write this as an exponential form, which is 3 squared. And the denominator of y term, which is the b squared, so we can also write 16 as an exponential form since it is a perfect square. So we can also write this as 4 squared. Then the value of A is 3, and the value of B is 4. Step number 2. Find the center with the coordinates H and K. So let us find H first. To find H, we need to use, or we need to get the expression X plus 2, then equate to 0. Then find the value of X. We transpose positive 2 on the other side, so we obtain X is equal to negative 2. Therefore, the value of h is negative 2. To find for k, so we will now get the expression y minus 3, then equate this to 0. Then, transpose negative 3 on the other side, so we obtain y is equal to 3. Then, the value of k is equal to 3. Therefore, the center of the ellipse with the coordinates of negative 2 and positive 3. Step number three, find the endpoints of the horizontal axis. To find the coordinates, the x coordinate we have h minus a, and the y coordinate is k. So one of the endpoints of the horizontal axis, then we will substitute the values. So we have negative 2 minus 3 and 3. So simplify negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5, and we copy the value of k, which is 3. Therefore, one of the endpoints is negative 5 and 3. The other endpoint, we have, we will substitute the values of h, a, k, so the x coordinate is h plus a, and the y coordinate is k. So we have negative 2 plus 3 and 3. Then simplify, negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1, and copy 
the value of k, which is 3. So the other endpoint of the horizontal axis with the coordinates of 1 and 3. Now, you have observed that the value of b is greater than a. Therefore, we can say that the endpoints of horizontal axis are the covertices of the ellipse. It means that the horizontal axis is the minor axis. So therefore, we have the covertices of an ellipse and the points are negative 5 comma 3 and 1 comma 3. Step number four, find the endpoints of the vertical axis. The coordinate of x is h and the coordinate of y is k minus b. Substitute the values. We have negative 2 and 3 minus 4. So just copy the value of h, which is negative 2, and simplify 3 minus 4. So we have negative 1. Therefore, one of the endpoints of the vertical axis is negative 2 and negative 1. Then the other endpoint, we have h and k plus b. Substitute negative 2 and 3 plus 4. Just copy the value of h, which is negative 2, and simplify 3 plus 4, which is 7. Therefore, one, the other endpoint of the vertical axis with the coordinates of negative 2 and 7. Again, b is greater than a. Therefore, this is what we call the vertices of the ellipse, the endpoints of the vertices of an ellipse. And the vertical axis is the major axis. So since you already have the horizontal, the vertices and the covertices, or the endpoints of the horizontal and vertical axis, we are now going to plot this. Okay, then we will connect the endpoints. So, if you can recall the center with the coordinates of negative 2 and 3, then the covertices of an ellipse, so we have negative 5 and 3, and the other point with the coordinates of 1, and 3. Then the vertices of an ellipse. The first point with the coordinates of negative 2 and negative 1. Then the other point is with the coordinates of negative 2 and 7. Then we're now going to connect all the endpoints of the horizontal and vertical axis. Okay, this is now the graph of an ellipse. Now, step number six, locate the foci. Before we find the foci, we need to compare first the values of A and B. You have observed that B is greater than A. Then we will use this formula, C squared is equal to B squared minus A squared. Then substitute the values of B and A. Then we have C squared is equal to 16 minus 9. And 16 minus 9 is 7. Then we need to get the square root both sides of our equation to find the value of c. So the value of c is equal to positive and negative square root of 7. Then we will now use this value of c to find the foci. So the first, we need to find one of the foci, which is the focus. Then substitute the values of h, k, and c. So we have negative 2 and 3 minus the square root of 7. So you have observed that you can, uh, we can use a calculator to find the exact or the approximate value of 3 minus square root of 7. Then we have negative 2 and 0 0.35 as the approximate value of 3 minus square root of 7. Then we can now locate this to our Cartesian plane. So we will now plot this point. So this is now the focus, one of the foci of the ellipse, then the other one, we will now use this formula, we have h and k plus c. So substitute the values, we have negative 2 and 3 plus square root of 7. Now, 
we will now find the approximate value of 3 plus square root of 7. Then we have now negative 2 and 5.65. So we will now plot this to our Cartesian plane. So this is now the coordinates negative 2 and 5.65. The length of major and minor axis. From the given ellipse, the major axis is the vertical axis. And the length of the major axis is 2b. Since the value of b is 4, therefore 2 times 4 is equal to 8 units. While the horizontal axis is the minor axis. And the length of the minor axis is to a. Since the value of a is 3, 2 times 3 is equal to 6 units.